everyone to the Ask Dr. Be Good show, the show where we bring you the really neat things happening in public education. And this time of year, one of the things that we get to recognize and highlight and show off are our top scholars. Last week we talked to the valedictorians and this week we get to talk to the salutatorians. And so, you know, the, the grade difference between a val and a sal is so slight sometimes. It's in the the decimals of difference. And so really um, being able to have these top students on, to have them reflect around what they do maybe a little bit different than everybody else that, that will get them that top spot and, and how that could carry over into getting a top school, a top job, and so forth. It, it, it all works together. And so we're proud to bring you our salutatorians, which we will um, talk to in a few minutes. But the very first thing that we need to do now, besides thanking um, everyone for allowing us to come on at 303, we wanted to honor the uh, let the show be paused, hashtag uh, Black, uh, Tuesday, Blackout Tuesday, and, and so forth, in recognition of the, of the fact that things need to change. And, and that's a whole podcast in its own, but we wanted to certainly uh, honor and recognize that we are aware that um, some of the ways that we treat people, our African American people, need to change. So thank you for allowing us to come on um, after that pause. So let's see. I'll, I'll repeat some of the things because every week we have new people on who've not listened before, and so we sort of catch them all up with information. And um, so as you know, lunches will be served every Monday. So um, the, um, let's see, uh, and we lost Vivian. So uh, let me get with uh, Vivian, one of our cells. Let me get that working in the background there. Okay, so lunches will be served all summer, every Monday or Tuesday if there's a holiday. Laptops, you do not have to drop your laptop off unless you're a senior or you're not doing summer school, and we really, really want everybody to do summer school. There is no child in the state of Texas, probably in the country, who if he or she does not continue doing some work, that, that he or she will not lose academic uh, ground. And so we're, we're going to be the district that loses the less grounds because we're working the hardest with our students to keep them academically focused during the summer, only three days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then on Monday and Fridays, there are electives. And I know that we have parents uh, who uh, wanted to hurry up and get signed up for Chinese camp. That sounded like so much fun. We have eSports. And just, I'm afraid I'm going to leave something off if I try to remember. So uh, let's make sure that you know how to sign up for summer school. Uh, let me see, let me go to the summer school. Uh, a flyer with the summer school information will be sent home later today. And let me see. Um, so right now I'm reading that uh, four help desks have been created for tomorrow morning for parents who need help with registering for summer school. There's a K-2 help desk, a 3, 5, 6, 8, and high school. Teachers are sending out invitations to Google Classrooms this afternoon. And um, most are done, checking to make sure which teachers still need help. All students will be receiving emails shortly. And then they said that I just received uh, a a flyer, let me see if the flyer has anything extra on there that I haven't talked about. Um, Google Meets Parent Help Desk. So the help desk for parents is tomorrow at 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Do you have a question about summer learning? And so they, there's a link there. 
for the K2, the 3.5, the 6.8, and the 9.12, there's different links for you to click on to, um, to get help for summer school if there's a question that you have. So um, let's see, what other housekeeping items do we have? And parent meetings. Um, we have two parent meetings, one tonight and one tomorrow. T the one today is all in English, the one tomorrow is all in Spanish because we continue to strive to get and to over-communicate with you about what's happening at Legacy, especially in this um, crazy school time and not knowing what's happening. We'll talk more about that today on, at the 6 o'clock parent meeting, and we will be posting a link on Facebook about, I don't know, 5.30, and feel free to come on and, and ask questions and, and so forth. Uh, a reminder that uh, when you, sometimes you can't get to the podcast at 3 o'clock on Tuesdays, but you can certainly go, if you don't want to scroll through all the Facebook and try to find the post of, that, of this one, for example, then by tomorrow you could go to YouTube, Ask Dr. Be Good, and you could click on that link. Now, one of the things that I'm asking people to do is to subscribe to the YouTube Legacy uh, channel, and that way you'll get a notification if you subscribe, you'll get a notification that the latest podcast has been posted. In and then the last thing that I wanted to chat about is the fact that um, never have you needed more information about public education. There's never been a time that you need to know as much about what's going on in pub ed as now. And so I not only do the podcast, we send home lots of information. I now have a Sunday show, radio show, 8 a.m., but it's uh, through the um, Ask Dr. Be Good Facebook page, and you can listen and learn a lot about what's going on in public education so that not only can you get your questions answered and you can become an advocate, but you can also see if, um, if we're able to answer questions that you have and to make you a more informed uh, public education advocate when the legislative session opens in January. Okay, now that was housekeeping. And I had told people to give me a call if I said anything wrong about summer school, and I guess I haven't gotten a call. So I guess I was um, okay in what I said about the summer school. The most important part, I think, is that there's help. There are human beings on the other end of that help desk link to help you understand how to help your child get into summer school. All right, now we get to talk to our valedictorians, our salutatorians. So um, let me see, Vivian, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, tell us what school you are and uh, how long you've been with us at Legacy. Um, I'm Vivian and I go to Legacy Plano and I've been at Legacy for one year. Okay, thank you. And then um, Maria? Good afternoon. I'm Maria Alvarado, and I'm the salutatorian from the West Mesquite campus. And I have attended Legacy since fifth grade, so approximately eight years. So you've been with us the whole time. Did you yeah, start since in the, the you very start, beginning. Did you start in the Dallas church or the Mesquite church? In the Dallas church. Wow. That, well, mm -hmm. well uh, congratulations. Wow, that's fun. Okay, so um, let's start with our questions. Let me... what. What traits do you guys think you have that got you one of the top spots in your high school? I'll go first. Okay, I'd say that responsibility, self-determination, and like always keeping a positive attitude when things get hard has actually like really helped me become the second top of my class like keeping up with my work. A planner helped me the overall those three qualities. Because you know, it, it's not easy to get into one of the top spots like you and um, Vivian have done. And so I think it's important that we identify what it is that separated you guys from, from maybe others that um, didn't get there. Maria? No, Vivian, right. Sorry. Um, I just, I just think it's the fact that um, 
I put my head into all the work that I do and I just try to do the best I can and try to get the good, um, try to get any good grades I can. And I don't like bad grades. So I'm always trying harder to get better grades. Okay. So perseverance maybe might be a good trait for you to identify. And so uh, what colleges are you guys going to? Um, I'm going to Collin College. What was your endorsement? Um, I did the four by four. And so dance or um, uh, in, 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 informational technology? I did science. Oh, science, okay. So what is your ultimate plan for yourself? Um, I plan to do uh, two years in Collin to get my Associates of Science and then transfer to a university to practice to do forensic science. Forensic science? Did the, um, mm -hmm. did the class that you took with Mr. Pacheco sort of help influence you on that? Um, yes, but no. I've always wanted to be a forensic scientist, but like the class with Pacheco really like made that, uh, made me want it more, if that makes sense. Well, sure, sure. I mean, there are a lot of TV shows that glorify and, and glamorize, you know, forensic science. So it's not unusual to have a, a, a student want to do that. But I know Mr. Pacheco has been very good about um, having forensic science and very hands-on, the dead body thing on the floor and, and the clues along the way. So certainly that must have reinforced your, um, your wanting to do that. So, um, you know, and that's, why, that's what school is supposed to be about. It's trying to get kids to say, yeah, yeah, that's what I want to do. Uh, I thought I did from what, just watching it on TV, but then when I get to do it in the classroom, I really like it now. So uh, that's, that's school at work. How about yourself? Um, now, now I've got my names mixed up. Um, Maria. Um, I'm, going, I'm going to be attending Eastfield College for my associate's degree in science too. And then I'd like to transfer to Texas A&M to major in chemistry. Why? Why so chemistry? Like, um, I want to, well, I want to be, well, but go into the pharma, ph pharmaceutical. Pharmacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pharmacy. And so, um, did Mr. Abreu have an influence on you? Yes, he sure did. <laughs> In what way? Yeah. Um, well, I told him that, well, I spoke to him that, like, I was really interested in, like, well, whenever I'd go to, like, the pharmacy, I'd see how, like, the pharmacist, like, prescribe the medication and how, like, they actually want to help people. Like, they let the customer know, like, what the medication's for and how it's going to help them. And, like, it just really interested me. And since I found out that he was actually a pharmacist, I wanted to take, like, his input, and it got me more interested. That's interesting because uh, you heard me talk to Vivian about Mr. Pacheco. He also was a pharmacist. And um, oh. so it's, it's interesting how our pharmacist teachers have influenced you guys in special ways. But then, again, that's what school is supposed to do, right? All right, let mm -hmm. me get another question up here. Um, have you, how much influence or how much has your family helped in making sure that you guys um, got to, you know, got top grades? Um, my mom has always uh, pushed me to be better and she's always wanted me to do good in school. She was actually the one who pushed me to um, graduate a year early. Well, good for you. So I, so I get good grades and, and everything and she helps me with everything. So, so you, are you 17? Yeah. I graduated a year early at 17 and um, I, I was, you know, some kids love the high school experience and they want to stay the whole, the whole time. And, but a person like me, I, 
I just didn't need it. It just, you know, kids are different. I was different. And so I went down to UT Austin as a 17-year-old. And, um, you know, I ended up okay, I think. Um, Maria? I'd say that my mother was more involved than my dad, but I would have to take both of them because they really pushed me to do better in school. I don't really like bad grades, so like, if I do an assignment, I really want to strive for that 90 or higher, which I think helped me a lot. Like both of them being in my life, pushing me. Well, sure. That's going to make a huge mm -hmm. difference. Uh, you know, family expectations. I will tell you, I don't know how you grew up, but in my home, it wasn't if you were going to college. It was where are you going to college? Was it like that in y'all's homes? Yes. In mine, yes. Yes. Yeah, I think that that helps a lot to to grow up in a in a family where the expectation is that you will go to college. Or if you're not college, it's okay to say vocational school or the military. Those are very acceptable also because they can they do often lead to the same thing and that is a successful productive citizen and that's what we need. And and um, so let me ask, how has legacy uh, helped you guys meet your goals? Well, for me, legacy, as it's like a new tech school, being from, familiarized with how Echo works was very similar to like Blackboard. And whenever I started taking my college classes, I didn't really struggle. And like with COVID-19, our transition to all online school, being familiar with Echo really helped me. Like I was already used to it. The only thing that really changed was switching from a classroom environment to a home environment. Well, and, and you're right. Um, we feel like at Legacy, we were able to transition faster than almost any school district around because of the projects being online. And I heard stories the week after we got back from spring break that if kids had a device at home, they were already working again. You know, if you'll remember, we had spring break, we came back the Tuesday after we came back, we were already serving meals. And then the Monday after that, we were deploying computers. And so if, if you guys had a computer in the home already to use, you were on Echo the Monday after spring break. And that's how seamless it was. So yes, you're absolutely right. How about for yourself, Vivian? Um, I would say that um, legacy has helped me a lot. It's um, I'm really a person who loves technology, so technology helped a lot. And just the teachers there, um, they they have patience for the kids. They um, I lost my train of thought. They they help the kids, and they don't. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Okay. So uh, I, I had alluded to how has legacy um, helped you meet your life goals or to maybe not meet them yet, but, but continue your path towards um, meeting your goal. What is your ultimate life goal, do you think? Um, my ultimate life goal, I, I would really like to... Um, become a forensic scientist and um, help with um, just anything that the police has to, anything that has to do with the police, I wanna be involved and I just, I wanna have a good um, science uh, career. Do you see yourself working for the FBI or, or, um, or a police um, organization? Um, I think I do. Uh, I'm more CSI than FBI. Okay. Because, yeah. So I think you'd actually have to go through a police academy. Does that sort of excite you? Yeah, that is, that, that's, um, it's very, it's interesting to me because I want to be able to, like, know everything and how and all the training they have to go through. Well, good, and, and I, it sounds like you're looking forward to it, you're not afraid of it, which is a 
uh, sign of a good top student. Um, and can I assume that you are bilingual? Yes. So el que sabe dos idiomas vale por dos. So you would really be somebody who um, would be even more valuable to that organization. Um, thank you, Maria. Ultimate life goals. Where do you see yourself 10 years down the road? Um, as a pharmacist, helping people, like informing, educating the people on the prescriptions that they're taking, making sure that they stay safe. You know, overall, just, I like working with people a lot. So being able to speak with the people and stuff, that's... Can I assume that you also are bilingual and... Um, can be even more valuable to an organization being a bilingual pharmacist? Yes, Glad I'm bilingual. <laughs> it's just mm -hmm. that you can't assume anymore, uh, you know, every time, but uh, like people can't assume that I don't speak Spanish, right? A lot of people assume I don't. Mm -hmm. um, how has COVID influenced or impacted you guys? Well, for me, COVID really just made me bored. <laughs> I stayed at home most of the time. The only time I would go out would be to go to work. Where'd you work? But educational-wise, Popeye's. Okay. So you're a hard-working student yeah. and working hard-working student. Wow. Good for mm -hmm. you. Felicitaciones. Thank you. Gracias. And, and so um, COVID, I, I guess, and, and it's something, it relates back to, I think, what you said. There wasn't much of a transition, an instructional transition, because New Tech is online and you are used to that. You were just, you just changed locations, right? You were just doing it mm -hmm. from home. And so mm -hmm. um, that's about the only thing that changed. Okay, Vivian? Um, COVID for me, it didn't really change much. Like, I still... I still did most of the things I do when I when I would go to school or not go to school. Um, but I did um, get a job. At, well, not not certainly a job is more an internship. Where did you get that? Um, at a dentist. So oh, I can cool. be a dental assistant. Fantastic. There you're starting your science. That's where work. I am right now. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, so your work in science and getting paid for it. And it looks good on a, on a college application. So good for you. How, how about your friends? What, in comparison to your friends, do you think that you handled COVID better, the same? What do you think? I, I think we, I think um i think i handled we handled it the same i mean mm -hmm. i don't i don't have contact with my legacy friends but i know my friends from other schools that we all just like it was the same for us it wasn't any different we all just got work we just went to work and came home and went to work and came home and it was just that okay maria Well, I feel like we all handled it the same too. It was just some people didn't submit assignments on the same day. So whenever our high school was over, they were rushing at the very end to turn everything in. But overall, most of the people worked. They just came home from work and just got to work. Okay, so it doesn't sound like there was too much trauma. Because I, I hear sometimes, and I haven't heard it at Legacy yet so much, other kids from other districts who are deeply depressed and, um, you know, just really missing the social aspect. But it sounds like you guys coped pretty well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, and and it's really, it sounds like it was a non-issue for you guys. That's fantastic. That's a um, really that's a really good answer. Um, it's, like I said, especially because there's been so much talk out there about the need for mental health resources and, and help. And certainly, let me go on record by saying that um, if you happen to have a relative 
or a friend who is displaying the need for um, mental health resources, reach out to your counselors, Ms. Zambrano, Ms. Forge, they will get the help that and the resources that that individual needs. There's never been a time when we have had so many resources available to kids and to adults as now. Just amazing. And so, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you um, sort of, I'm going to deputize you as mental health helpers with the, fa with the knowledge that if you have people in your world who you see, your parents see, are suffering because too much COVID, whatever that looks like in different people's worlds, there are resources available to help them. And many times they're free right now. So um, let me ask you, we have a, just a few minutes left. As I mentioned earlier, podcast world is very fast. Do you have any questions for me? Every once in a while, there's a little bit of time left to talk about um, to, to sort of the ask doctor be good, ask doctor be good a question. Any of you have a question for me? Um, I don't, I don't really have any questions. Any comments, any last words for legacy? Making you think on the spot. <laughs> and Maria, I didn't ask you, you have any questions for me? No, any questions, no. Well, I always think when people don't have questions, and you know, it's funny, I've, I've done a couple of uh, parent, and I'm sorry, um, staff meetings, and, and there've not been questions. When there are no questions for me, that means that somehow I've been able to meet the need of communication to where people don't have any burning questions and, and gaps in their knowledge about what we do. So I'm going to take that as a compliment, and I'm going to wish you guys well. Uh, I will see you 13th of June. What do you think of our graduation ceremony, ladies? I feel like it's better because some schools aren't graduating or crossing the stage, but legacies made it to where we can actually cross the stage and graduate, which is really nice. Vivian, any opinion? I I agree with her, because I, I know um, other schools are just doing it through Zoom, and we actually get to like cross the stage, even though our parents will only see it through tech, through their phones. Well, they'll see it from their mm -hmm. car. I mean, they, they can actually watch you from their car, and they'll be able to take part also in the Google uh, Meets uh, link. But w we're doing it according to the, go uh, the governor's executive orders, and but it's, it's a little bit unusual, and certainly like a, you've, some of you may have heard me say that this will be the graduation ceremony that you seniors will be talking about the rest of your lives because nobody will have such a good story as you. And so um, we uh, will see you June, Saturday, June 13th. We hope you enjoy the day. And um, spoiler alert, we've got some gifts for you too. All right, everyone, thank you so much for being here. And we will see you next week. Thank you for tuning in to the Ask Dr. Be Good Show. For more information on Legacy Preparatory Charter Schools, visit our website, LegacyPCA.com, or call 469-249-1099. And remember to like us on Facebook, where we stream live weekly Tuesdays at 3 p.m.